that's literally right on the flag which increased our little bit of a hybrid course do you know what honestly that's about two foot away from the pin this is the easiest golf club i have ever hit full stop cannot seem to hit a bad shot with it the question is what is it and why will it never go in my golf bag but the question is how far will you go to make your game the best it can possibly be to make golf the easiest it can possibly be if it means putting a club in the bag that's maybe got a bit of a stigma attached to it if it's not the coolest looking club in the bag but it performs really well would you put it in the bag the club in question is also very versatile you can use it in a number of positions and not just from the tee swing ball swing ah it's not too bad it is of course a hybrid but it's not just any ordinary hybrid so the question is what is so different about this particular hybrid and why am i saying it's the easiest club i've ever used well first of all it's a ladies hybrid that's the start it's by callaway and it's called reva that's their range they do a driver they do fairway woods they do hybrids i'm not sure whether they do irons or not i'm not maybe after this review i better check them out the other thing that's massively different is the shaft, both the length of it and the weight of it. It's a 45 gram shaft. I could almost snap it in half, it's that flexible. The club head itself is a bit bulky in terms of uh, how it sits behind the ball. It's got 27 degrees worth of loft. It's a five hybrid. All of these things are something that I've never really tried before. And as I've said already, the easiest without doubt golf club that i've ever tried to play right so now you know what club it is the fact that it's a ladies golf club the fact that it's 45 gram shaft the fact that like i said it doesn't look the coolest club in the bag my question is would you game it because like i said i've been discussing with the camera lady all morning this is probably as good a performing club as i've ever used it's so easy to launch it seems to go straight all the time it's just it takes an easy swing to get it airborne it travels good distance it ticks all them boxes, but I still say there's no way I'd put this into my golf bag. That's how shallow minded I am. The question is, comments down below, would you? Now the next thing that makes this particular hybrid really interesting to me on a personal level is the fact that it's 27 degrees. The fact that I've never played a hybrid with that much loft on it before. So again, going back to my initial statement, the easiest club I've ever played, that loft is certainly a big help. The length of shaft is a big help. And I think the flex of the shaft and the weight of it's a massive help as well. And we know that hybrids in general are real versatile clubs. I said about chipping, but you're in a lie like I've got currently. And what I want to know is what 27 degrees worth of loft does in terms of helping me get out of this kind of lie. And we've got a camera behind the green, which will tell us. It literally pops the ball up again so high, so easy. That was quite a heavy lie I was in there. That 27 degrees again just adds to what's so great about this golf club. So mega impressed with what this club has done so far and I've already collected data but what I am going to do is I'm going to try a little bit of a uh, put a simulator hole up here at Quail Hollow. Fairly straightforward um, par 3, 160 it's showing to the flag. And I just want to see if I can put my money where my mouth is and uh, proved that this is the easiest golf club I've ever hit. About to eat your words and... Oh, maybe not. Well, it's a super strike. It's left of the pin if I have got that right. Yeah, look at the ball flight. Look how high that ball, towering ball flight. It's a little bit long. It was, and again, the data was that little bit longer than that. But there you go, 166 carry, 121 ball speed six and a half thousand revs in terms of spin i mean that's just incredible what that ball has just done we haven't got descent angle on that we'll have a look at that but that's literally coming down as you can see from the ball flight and that's stopping on a green almost immediately i cannot believe like i said just how easy this thing gets airborne that's a little bit more cutty but again won't be far off a little bit easier on the swing so hopefully we've got the yardage dipped a little you see the massive towering ball flight yet again we took some distance off we did well 162 carry went past the flag on the right hand side and just unbelievable seven and a half thousand revs of spin on that one ball speeds 120 club head speed 84 mile an hour 20 degrees in terms of launch seriously 
This club would be an absolute weapon in the majority of average cl golf club players' bags, let me tell you, if I can get them words out. I'm amazed at this thing, you know. Right, as far as I'm concerned, I can do little more in terms of testing. We've tried it from a number of different positions. We've tried it off the ground, we've tried uh, the grass, we've tried it from the rough. We've tried it a little chip and run, and that's what makes a hybrid so versatile in the first place. But what makes this difference is A, that it's a woman's club and maybe that makes no difference at all. Maybe they're just exactly the same as the men's. The shaft was certainly really light and that 27 degrees, don't forget, I think is a massive help for most average golfers would benefit from playing a lofted hybrid based on what I found today. I'm going to start off with the numbers difference. I'm going to start off with dispersion because first of all, that's the important bit to me. You have a look what's up there now. There's one long left, which I've turned over a little bit, but the rest of them are very much grouped. I'd be hitting greens, I'd be more than happy with that dispersion as an average golfer. You then turn into the data itself. 82 mile an hour club head speed. But look at the ball speeds is the bit that really interests me. First of all, it's its consistency, which I find suggests that I'm fine in the middle. And if I'm not fine in the middle, then there's forgiveness either side because we're 113 on average, but 110 to 116 the top ball speed. Spin rate 4 to 50, which again, don't forget, we're a 27 degree club in hand here. Carry distance of 167. Now again, there's two balls there, 177 and 175, that are again, they're longer, but it's reflective in how hard I hit the ball, how fast the club head speed was, if you like. With the two longer balls, peak height, 98 on average again the ball flight you've seen from what we did in terms of that uh, the two holes that we played uh, two balls i hit on the par three a quail hollow towering ball flight and so easy to launch and a land angle of 46.9 that if you took ball two out the equation of 41.1 that'd make a big difference and the ball is coming down at the steepest angle and stopping on greens go back to the original question or title of this video about why is this the easiest I've ever hit well it was because it literally needed zero effort from me whatsoever I felt so comfortable at address I felt like I needed to put nothing on it whatsoever just swing a natural smooth rhythm get that swing going and the club did the rest it launched the ball so high it maintained a high ball speed and to be carrying that sort of 165 distance what a great club to have in the bag now taking the women's thing out of the equation, uh, which may be an issue for most men to put a women's golf club in the bag, I don't think that's a major thing, but obviously there is a man's equivalent, but that lighter weight shaft again, it's very much similar to another video I did recently with driver shafts, they're definitely worth looking at, lighter weight shafts and heavier weight, all I'm saying is don't go with the norm, don't go with you always play, try either end of the spectrums and just find out that that could be a real game change it in terms of your own bag anyway thanks as ever for watching i really enjoyed that one on a personal level and the question is will that hybrid end up in my bag you'll have to watch future on course videos to find out comments down below your own experiences have you tried them what are your thoughts on this what are your thoughts on shaft weights how much of a difference it may all matters to me and your fellow golfers to read those comments so uh that's it another one done i'll see you all very soon